Hello everybody, another video from me. Uh, this time a review of Mulan 2. But, you know, good snappy introduction, we want one, so here's the introduction. I don't know if any of you have siblings, but if you do, I think you'll have noticed by now that siblings rarely agree on anything if they can help it. In my family, it's the question of whether eggplant tastes good or not, whether kissing in movies is okay, and whether rapping is a legitimate form of singing, and these are the things that the past few the past few weeks and before that it was some other thing I don't even remember anyway but there is one thing that unites us all as an as an entire clan and that is Mulan 2 you can mention this book anywhere in the house you want and within seconds somebody will poke their head around the door and be like oh you're talking about Mulan 2 and then we, and they will ju literally just give you a unsolicited rant about how much they hate that movie because the thing is, we all loved Mulan, even the boys. Everybody agreed that it's a great movie. It's got a good story, good characters, good music, g great humor. It was very good. So obviously, I would be one of those people naive enough to watch a sequel, you know, because I don't learn from my mistakes. And Disney, they know this. And Disney wants to make money. And so Disney made Mulan too. Following from Mulan, uh, Shang and Mulan are a couple. And uh, how, uh, no, a few minutes into the movie, Shang proposes to Mulan, and she obviously says yes. But they soon find out nothing, not everything is as it should be. They are opposites in almost everything. They do not agree on a single important thing. <laughs> so tell me, oh. will it be a big wedding? Absolutely. Oh no, absolutely not. Children? As many as possible. <laughs> Maybe one or two. We'll have to think about it. Right away. Blue. Pink. Mild. Spicy. Yes. No. Oh dear. Uh, at the same time, uh, Mushu finds out that if Mulan marries Shang, he will no longer be the guardian dragon and will have to listen to the ancestors again. And he has not made himself very popular with them while he was in power. So he decides to break Mulan and Shang up. Yes. That, that That's Mushu's role in this movie. And, you know, aside from all this relationship drama, there actually is a threat of war, this time from the Mongols, and there's three princesses who have to be delivered safely somewhere else. Yeah, you heard it right, only a few weeks, and it literally is a few weeks according to the movie, after defeating the Huns, China is now being threatened by Mongols, but this time, instead of fighting them, the Emperor is going to try to solve it by forging an alliance with a nearby kingdom. To do this, his three daughters have to marry their three princes, and then they will become one, well, not one kingdom, but they will become friends, and therefore the Mongols will be too afraid to come in. Uh, it is Shang and Mulan's job to deliver the three princesses safely to that other kingdom, and obviously the three soldiers from last movie join them. Um, all three of these soldiers have exactly one definable character trait, and yes, they do share these definable character traits with the three princesses, so we all know what's gonna happen. Meanwhile, Mulan and the pr three princesses prove to be ancient Chinese girls in an ancient Chinese culture with a modern Western mindset when they oppose the marriages that are going to save their entire country because you have to be true to your heart. Fair enough. Just, just let China be invaded by Mongols then. Cool, yeah. So, it is interesting to me actually when in a movie a girl sacrifices her life for her country by literally, you know, dying. It is, you know, it's heroic, cool, wonderful that she did that. But then a girl sacrifices her life by marrying somebody, somebody she's never even met. I mean, he might turn out to be a nice guy. Obviously in this movie it turned out to be a little dweeb, but because, you know, heaven forbid they actually be arranged to marry somebody they actually like. But, you know, I think it's interesting just that when she lays down her life by marrying, uh, by uh, going through of an arranged marriage, it's suddenly deplorable, even though they're both laying down their lives. Uh, about the music, there were three songs in Mulan 2, and I had completely forgotten the existence of one, I just did not even remember it. Uh, another one was a reprise from the first movie, so I remembered that one. And, this, and, the, and, and the third one was, was actually the first in this movie, but uh, the other one, I only remembered the fact that it was there. I didn't remember the content, or the lyrics, or or the melody, I just remembered that it was there. So, yeah. 
musical merits, not that great. And the same can be said for the plot. There were only two action scenes in this movie. Uh, they were both, yeah, they were both important to the plot, but they weren't very impressive. And they were also both, the, the reason that they got started was in both cases a bit sudden and a bit strange. Uh, also, during the whole uh, plot thing, while we're talking about that, Mushu, of course, is trying to break up Mulan and Shang, which would not have worked if they had just had one decent conversation, like adults. But, you know, this is Disney. So, they decide to break up, and it's all very dramatic. And anyway, then comes the second fight scene, and Shang dies by plunging into a ravine, which, you know, is terribly heartbreaking, and leads Mulan to say, well, I'll go and marry the princesses. Which leads Mulan to say, well, I'll go marry the princess, princes in your place. But don't worry, though, because literally, literally, this, this is how the scenes go. Sh Shang dies, Mulan spends like two minutes crying and is like, yo, I'll take your places. Next scene, the literal next scene, we see Shang getting dragged out of the river by his horse and he's still alive. What is the use of that? I mean, I get it, it had plot revel. I get it, I, it had plot revelance. Is that how you say it? Anyway. I get it, it was important to the plot, it did something to the plot, but... Come on. We, if you're gonna kill somebody, stick with it, okay? And if you're gonna make somebody turn out to be alive again, don't, don't be like, do it, do, don't do it five minutes after they die. That isn't enough time for me to think you're actually serious about it, because I know the way of movies. They'll kill somebody and then they'll come back to life. So I was already doubting whether he was really dead. But if they had waited a little bit, without showing him, until the very last moment, I would have actually... No, I wouldn't have been fooled, but I would have been wondering. I would have been a bit more interested. But here it was just... They didn't even give you time to process it. Uh, after all this comes the climax. It is a wreck. So basically, Mulan is there and she's about to marry this little prince. He's actually younger than her. And then Shang storms in and is like, no, you can't marry her. And Mulan's like, well, what are you going to do about it? And he's like, well, I'm winging it. Which was her advice, you know? She told him sometimes you just have to wing it. It turns out, though, that this advice was horrible and there might actually be an action scene because, you know, when you're winging it, you're probably going to get some people mad. But... Just before there actually might be an action scene, Mushu decides to make himself useful and impersonates the great dragon of love. And, with, and from then on, the climax is over within two minutes, literally. All he does is stand there, pretending he's the great dragon of love, by standing inside this big sculpture and like projecting his voice or whatever. And he's like, your princesses can marry who they want, Mulan and Shang are married, boom, everybody have fun. I really feel I would not be surprised if this turned out to be a joke somebody made that accidentally got taken seriously and incorporated in the movie. The threat of um, the Mongols isn't even mentioned. Like I said, who cares about all of China when your feelings are on the line? It's very selfish, and this selfishness blatantly contradicts the condemnation in this movie of Mushu's actions, you know? Mushu, who tries to break Shang and Mulan up because of his own selfish uh, feelings, is condemned. Whereas the three princesses and Mulan, who are all like, no, I have to follow my heart and not marry this dude and therefore doom my entire people to be slaughtered by the Mongols, are like, yeah, totally, follow your heart. It just doesn't work. And that's not the only bad mas message. In the beginning of the movie, Mulan and Shang's parents obviously see that they are not a good couple, that they are opposites, and they give them yin and yang necklaces. And yes, it's yin and yang again. Uh, I get it, it's important to Chinese culture, but I'm getting tired of yin and yang. Anyway... Uh, they're trying to say opposites work well together. The thing is, this is just not true. Opposites, yes, opposites complement each other, but they also break each other down. But even the, the, beside all the relationship opposite stuff, uh, this, there's a deeper, darker meaning behind it. Because in China they believe, uh, you know, yin and yang, black and white, that evil and goodness are imbalanced. You need both to keep the world in balance. Destroy one and the world will get messed up. And this is very in direct contrast with the Bible where we say uh, there is evil and there is good and where there is one, uh, the, the other must be destroyed. Um, if they meet, they, they can't work together. And uh, in the end we say evil and evil is going to be utterly destroyed by God who is good. And 
that is just in stark contrast um, with this. Anybody who believes evil is necessary to keep the world in balance has very little hope for the future, because you're always going to need the bad things, because else it's going to be even worse. Uh, beginning this movie, I was slightly worried, because I knew that Disney has this penchant for ruining movies. I was right to worry. The plot, the music, and everything was just so bad. More importantly, the movie advocates for following your heart despite the cost, which is directly contradicting itself. Uh, nobody has any decent conversations, they just resort to ugly shouting matches. Mulan and Shang's relationship was unhealthy, bef even before Mushu tried to break them up, but they still ended up together. Um, the messages were bad. You know, I don't know if you guys have this, but there is a vault in my head that is labeled It Never Happened, where I try to stuff all the embarrassing things I've ever done in my life. It is overflowing, so I'm gonna have to install a second vault soon, because else I will, because they keep on flowing over when I don't want them and making me cringe at myself. Anyway, there is still enough space, and yes, Mulan 2 is going into that fault. It did not happen, it doesn't exist, it is not canon, I do not accept it. Mulan 2 is rubbish and should never have been made. Oh, sorry, I fell asleep while I was waiting on you to make me a sandwich. Go back to sleep and starve. The dishes? I thought you wanted to do that. <laughs> you were wrong. What will you learn? What will you learn? That your actions have consequences! I should have left you on that street corner where you were standing. But you didn't!